Hello everyone, in this video we are going to go over the solutions for the challenges that were introduced for the first part of NumPy where we basically were introduced to NumPy. We talked about random numbers, sorting, and also Boolean masking. So let's see what we have. So the first challenge here is uh, creating a function that uh, creates n numbers of random and, and random numbers. These random numbers are integer numbers between 0 and 5, basically 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Um, so let's, let's look at how we create the function first. So the, creating the function is basically you say just a name. So I chose the name create random and the input n. And we want to create random numbers, random integers. So I use the uh, function rand n. That is a part of the uh, collections of random functions that exist in np.random. And I specify 5 because I want integers between 0 and 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And size uh, tells me the number of uh, numbers I want to create. So once I run this, now I have uh, those numbers. But what I want it to report, what I want this function to report is uh, the number of times each possibility uh, uh, that, 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 that are 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 um, are in those 1,000 or uh, 10, 100, 1,000. Or like how many of those n numbers are zero how many of those n numbers are one and so on and so forth so to do that we need to create a loop that takes advantage of boolean masking uh, the way the boolean masking work says uh, boolean masking i want to create a boolean mask and it says um, i want to see true and false wherever the numbers is uh, one of these possibilities 0 1 2 3 and 4 which this loop creates so i create a specific boolean masking for all of these possibilities and at, at that time uh, and during that iteration of this loop then i will be able to calculate uh, the number of trues so when i say sum of a boolean mask basically because it's a uh, binary zero and one um, true or false uh, nature when you say sum of a boolean basically acts uh, the ones as one the, the trues as one and the false as zero so when you sum over a boolean mask basically tells you the number of trues um, so i create a template and say uh, for example for the possibility uh, zero for the possibility zero uh, how many um, am i getting from the number the n numbers in this uh in this uh, collection of random numbers so i run this now all i need to do is to uh, make sure that the numpy is uh, imported and uh, to make things easier i create a list call it options and all of the options that uh, the question is asking me to try the function with i put them in that option and then I uh, go over a loop over all of those options <clears throat> and pass O, which is every time one of these possibilities, one of these options, and then uh, call the function, which will end up printing uh, what, I, what I want. So once I run this, now I see uh, the patterns. I will see the results. So when I have only 100 uh, random uh, numbers these are what I get pay attention if I rerun this again I'm going to have a different uh, output so let's run this again now you see there is another output let's run this again this is completely random like every time uh, uh, it's going to be a different output so that's really uh, what random numbers are but when you are uh, doing this if you pay attention as you go uh, on over um, you know go higher on your numbers of n from 100 to all the way to million 
the percentage of variation uh, decreases. Um, so basically, um, if we go to infinity, um, all of these um, possibilities will have equal um, occurrences, basically. So because because we are going like over higher and higher number, we are getting closer to infinity, and that's the pattern we are seeing. And this is a statistically proven. If you have a high number, then that's when you actually see uh, your um, distribution, your probability distribution. So that was challenge one. Uh, challenge two um, is getting you all to calculate um, the averages for sepal length for all of the, the iris flowers, the sepal width, uh, the petal length and petal width for all of the three iris flowers. So this was uh, the parts that uh, was already provided in the um, uh, in the file I had shared. Uh, so uh, basically, you want to start by saying to yourself that I want to have 15 calculations. Um, I want to have a, a calculation per each measurement and each flower. So since the, 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 there are five measurements, four measure, measurements and three flowers, now you're going to have, I'm sorry, 12 um, calculations. So to create those 12 calculations, you ha you need, you're going to need a nested loop. So you loop over all of your flowers, uh, which are the three these three types, and then you loop over all of your column names or your measures. And uh, you create a Boolean mask uh, based on uh, both, you create a Boolean mask based on the flower. So you only keep the pertinent flowers uh, based on the, uh, iris 4 which uh, gives us the name of the flower so if i run this here um, all of these are basically a collection of um so i need to run this first uh, basically you, you have an uh, array or list that has the name of the flowers. So once you create a Boolean mask using this array, um, you, you can keep the flowers that you want, you're interested in. So you keep those uh, flowers uh, in the working data, data frame. And then once you uh, have all of the data that you wanna run the average on, now you, uh, specify what measurements using this for loop to be calculated and you will say the average of uh, the uh, you know specific measurement for the specific flower is um, that calculation so this is the measurement this is the flower name that comes from this for loop and this is the uh, calculations and once you run this uh, you get all of the values that you're looking for Challenge three is really not a programming challenge, as I said. Uh, what we are interested in is to create this uh, table-like uh, values from all of these values above. Um, so I have done this here using um, data frame, which is a panda from modules panda, which we will learn in uh, one of the following uh, lab modules. But for now, let's just for like, um, let's just like ignore this part and just look at these numbers. When you, when you look at these numbers, uh, you will see that um, petal length um, and also petal width has so much variation that can explain which flower um, is, um, can, can basically distinguish between the flowers. So basically, if your petal length is very, very small on the average of all of the iris flowers petal length, you could say that probably it's an iris setosa. And 
based on looking at the data, we were able to come up with this understanding. And that's a pattern that emerges. So challenge number four, on this one, we wanted to uh, do a calculations of area, a uh, sepal area of all of the flowers, and uh, then sort the whole iris data based on the sorting of um, the sepal area. So the first thing we need to do is um, actually do go about that calculation. And we remember that we have a mapping function, very powerful mapping function uh, that we could use uh, to go about this calculation. So I could uh, create a lambda function that multiplies uh, the first and second input and pass the sepal length and sepal width um, numbers to um, sepal length and sepal width number to this mapping. Once I run this, uh, I will have the sepal area. And then remember, when I wanted to uh, do a um, sorting uh, based on, I wanted to sort uh, a separate um, column based on another column, I would use the arc sort. So basically I would find the indexes of the sorting of this column that I want my other column to be sorted with, and then I would apply that indexes to the other one. So I find those indexes by the NP arc sort, and then I reshuffle the iris data based on the those indexes. And the reason I have uh, this um, colon colon negative one is because I want uh, the reversed uh, sorting. So once I run this, now <clears throat> I will get to see uh, the flower, the iris data sorted based on the sepal area. Pay attention, we are not even seeing the sepal area in this data. Uh, we do not have the sepal uh, area. We, this is, uh, this is an array we have calculated. It's somewhere else, but we are using it to uh, sort this data. Uh, so it's an important thing to pay attention to. Uh, but we can sort of like see that is happening. Like the higher numbers are these, uh, as you, you can see that. Um, these are the higher numbers uh, that are happening here. So if you scroll down, you can see by the um, sepal area, there is a fair distinction between the flowers. So sort of uh, the Iris virginica starts, then you know you get to Iris setosa, and then um, you go down to all of the R R Iris versicolor or virginica. So there's like a fair separation between them. Uh, we could have done the same thing uh, by NP vectorize. So if you wanted to do this with NP vectorize, you would have to create um, a, a function first. So you create that function. Do you remember? Uh, you say NP vectorize and you pass the lambda function. Now it creates a function that you can uh, apply to uh, different um, arrays and different uh, uh, you know, different arrays basically. So once you create that, now you say, okay, I want to pass uh, the um, sepal length and sepal width. Once you run this, uh, it gives you those values. Uh, so we want this to be sorted. So you say, I want the MP arc sort of it. And this is uh, the indexes of this sorting. And now we say, I want it to be reversed. And now you say I want this to uh, basically uh, uh, just sort the iris data. So you can see you could have done all of those things that we did on um, this part by just in one line. If you, um, if you knew what you were doing, you could have done um, all of these um, in only let me make this smaller. You could have done the same thing that you did here in only one line that I just did here. Before I finish the video, uh, let me introduce to you uh, your assignment for this module. The assignment for this module is going to be uh, the repetition of assignment number and uh, the challenge four, 
but I want you to now also calculate the petal area and also do uh, the calculation three, which is basically the combination of sepal and petal, and then calculation four, which is the same thing, but the reverse one. And, and then I want you to eyeball the data and tell me which calculation, um, sepal area, petal area, calculation three or calculation four, leads to the best separation of the flowers in the data. Um, so that's, that's the assignment seven, uh, but there is also a bonus. If you can do this without having to eyeball your data, uh, which is basically you have to come up with a metric that you calculate um, based on the sorted data, and then comparing those metric and um, the, the one that has the best metric will be the one that leads to, to the separation. Um, this is an all or nothing uh, bonus point. And for it, for you to get uh, the uh, uh, complete bonus point, you have to um, do all of the code, also uh, submit an explanation of what is your metric and why it's a metric that shows the separation and, and the codes and the output and the result.